Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here uh, an unboxing and review video. Uh, and this, as you can see, is a Mont Blanc pen. Uh, it's Around the World in 80 Days Special Edition. Now, uh, it's not per se a writer's edition pen. Uh, it's uh, Even though uh, Jules Verne wrote uh, Around the World in 80 Days, um, it's more of a special edition pen uh, rather than a writer's edition. Uh, this is one of the more expensive versions of this pen. Uh, I kind of thought it was going to come in a much bigger sort of squarer um, box, a little bit like the writer's edition boxes that Mont Blanc do, but uh, I was a little bit surprised it came in a smaller box, but I've looked online and typically uh, these are uh, how they are shipped. Now, I was looking online, I really liked the look of this pen, uh, and you can see uh, the Mont Blanc box here. Uh, and I was looking around a number of different jewelers in the UK online, and the last one of three that I looked at, I they all had a 10% off uh, extra code, they called it, and none of the codes worked. And, and the code didn't work for the third uh, retailer that, or jewellers that I, or boutique that I uh, tried to use the code on. But then they actually sent me uh, an email with about 17% off. So who am I to decline 17% off a Mont Blanc uh, pen? So this is it here. So I think let's remove the sleeve uh, and uh, you will see... Uh, it does have the Mont Blanc uh, star uh, logo there, or mountain cap, and it does say Mont Blanc on the reverse as well. Uh, if I slide uh, the lid off, uh, you'll see here a Mont Blanc, uh, Meisterstruck Around the World in 80 Days Special Edition, um, and it has various quotes uh, from uh, the... Uh, uh, around the world in 80 days story um, there's a number of different versions of this pen and Mont Blanc typically do this a lot uh, and uh, you can see here as well uh, Phileas Fogg uh, around the world in 80 days uh, and this is the pen that uh, I picked up and uh, this is a really really beautiful beautiful pen. So I think let's uh, put that booklet away. Uh, you have this uh, nice Mont Blanc pouch, which I do think is good. Uh, you also have a service guide there as well. I'll put that to one side. And then you can see this here. And I have to say, I wish uh, Mont Blanc did this with all of their pens. Um, uh, I actually, <laughs> to be honest, I wish that other retailers would do it. it it's a little bit of a nice thing. Um, I think Pelican do it as well. I know I've had a few from Pelican, not in a cloth bag, but uh, uh, certainly a pen pouch of sorts. Uh, but uh, that, I think, is something to keep uh, for sure. Uh, and then uh, it comes in this, and obviously I have opened it, and yes, I have been writing with it as well. So if I uh, try to remove the pen here, uh, I will show you the pen in all its glory. So this is the Mont Blanc uh, Around the World in 80 Days Special Edition. And I think you can probably understand why I wanted this pen. You've got the Mont Blanc Snowflake there, or Mountain Cap, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, this is like a, a black wood, like an ebony wood. Uh, and you can see that this is engraved. Um, it's not lacquered, so it's not technically protected, but this, uh, I think, looks beautiful with the gold trim there. And you do have a, a ruby uh, diamond there as well. Uh, is it really a ruby? Mont Blanc claim it's a ruby. Um, I'm not so sure. But then when I rotate it around, you'll see here it has the uh, elephant on the plaque as well. Uh, this really is a beautiful pen. Uh, you also have various other symbols here. 
uh, that you can see. And also, uh, I've got a medium sticker here. I bought it with a medium nib. Uh, the jewelers only had one of these left, and actually each of them only had one left. And I want to say that maybe they do hold stock, but I have a feeling that they were using Mont Blanc to supply the stock because each one only had one left in a medium nib. Uh, and then the others also, strangely, went out of stock as well after I purchased this one. But uh, I had actually gone through the whole checkout process. I needed to put my uh, email address and my postal address in and uh, just so I could use that code. But the last retailer uh, where I picked this one up, which was CW Sellers in the UK, uh, they then did email me uh, an email, and I kind of freaked out because the first I noticed was uh, AfterShip on my phone, uh, which is an application that tracks uh, my email address and tra tracks every shipment that I'm, I've got coming in, said that I had this pen on order. And I was like, well, I haven't actually ordered it. I cancelled it. I didn't go through with the order. Uh, but because uh, CW Sellers had actually sent me this email, they also included a, a order number on it as well uh, with the 17% the off. So uh, that's what freaked me out originally. And I freaked out uh, and then I suddenly realized what had happened. So about 12 hours later, it was only when I really read the email, I actually realized there was 17% off. So I did eventually then buy this pen. But you can see here, this really is gorgeous. It's got a lot of uh, engraving going on there. Uh, what I would say, though, is that the engraving on the cap is a little bit more deeper than on the body. Um, the body, not so much. And I don't know why. I I'm not sure if that was designed for that reason or what had happened there. Now, typically, I do not go for wood pens. The reason being, I'm not a wood pen fan. I, I kind of always think back to the custom pen makers when they were doing kit pens. Um, also, you do have to be careful with wood and various types of wood because it will shrink or expand with age or um, the climate and can crack. So... Uh, I don't typically normally buy wood pens. I think I've got a, um, a Ryan Cruzak pen with a wood cap. Um, I know I've got a friend that had the same one and the cap cracked at one point. Uh, so I'm always a little bit wary about wood pens, uh, and certainly expensive pens. But equally, I, I know that Mont Blanc are going to... I, I could send this off to Mont Blanc and, and they would replace the cap or repair it. Uh, or the body if it were to crack. So uh, there is a, a warranty there with Mont Blanc. Uh, if I unscrew the cap, you'll see that I have got a little bit of ink there on the nib. Um, it is. Uh, it does have a uh, hot air balloon there on the nib, which is nice. Uh, the, the section is, yes, it's gold uh, plated. Uh, it is a bit shiny. The threads are a little bit more prominent here than maybe on some other Mont Blancs. Um, they've tried to reduce the step down here just gradually, which is nice, but those threads are quite sharp. Um, that said, uh, if I'm writing with it and my finger and thumb is uh, down here properly on the section, uh, I'm not feeling it. But if I were to move up a little bit, I can feel that there. Now... Like with most Mont Blancs, you can't really post it. Like it, it will wobble. It, it's not going to sit on there. Uh, so it's really not being designed to be posted. And that's the same with a lot of the Mont Blanc writers editions as well. But this is a gorgeous pen. Very glad that I was able to add this to my collection. So I think with that, we'll do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison. And then we'll do a writing sample. So, the full length of the pen, we are looking at, I'd say, 150 millimeters in length. The length of the cap, we're looking at 74 millimeters in length. So, uh, it's a long cap, um, 
but equally a long body there as well uh, or long pen with it capped now if we look at the uh, length of the body to the tip of the nibble tip of the tines we're looking at uh, I want to say about 128 millimeters in length so it's not quite uh, an oversized pen but it's not far off uh, and I think you can see that there in my hand. It's actually a decent size on camera. Uh, I think what we'll do, we'll do a weight check. Now, although there's some ink on the nib, uh, it isn't inked up. So uh, I have just dipped that nib uh, to start with. But I will be inking it up fully. So the full weight of the pen, and you might be surprised, bearing in mind this is wood. This is just under 70.5 grams in weight so this is a heavy pen the weight of the cap we're looking at just over 29 and a half grams and then the weight of the body we're looking at just under 41 grams in weight so uh, that is uh, quite a weighty pen um it's certainly up there with some of my more weighty pens um i can't remember exactly what the the most weightiest pen is maybe i need to at some point uh go through and update my spreadsheet and actually work out what that is uh and add a column on weight uh and and a column on total weight weight of the cap and weight of the pen but i know equally that that's going to be a lot of work to do um, but this is a gorgeous pen. Really glad I was able to add it to my collection. Uh, I am loving this pen a lot. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have an Anoto, and this is a Colt Pens exclusive. This is a Charles Dickens Christmas Cowl. We have a Marjon Titanium TI-136. We have an Anoto University of Oxford. We have a Visconti Empire. We have the Mont Blanc Around the World in 80 Days Special Edition. We have an Anoto Platinum Jubilee in Sterling Silver. An Anoto Coronation in Sterling Silver. A Mont Blanc Writer's Edition, and this is the Jules Verne. We have a Parker Duofold Centennial Godron in Gold. And we have a Mont Blanc Writer's Edition Jane Austen. So, I think let's now do a writing sample. Now, some of you will say, hold on a moment, you've inked this up uh, with the wrong ink. And yes, I could be seen to be doing that. So, uh, this is a uh, Mont Blanc. And it's around the world. And I know I'm not going to fit this on a single line around the world in 80 uh, days. Uh, and actually, I maybe I will actually. It's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, I was thinking I probably wouldn't fit that on. Uh, the ink in here today is not a black ink and it's not a gold ink. It's uh, a uh, beautiful ink that I love a lot. It's a uh, Sailor. And it is gentle, and it's Kin Makusai. Um, I have uh, still bottles of not only Kin Makusai, but also Apricot or Apricot, depending on how uh, you want to call it. Uh, but I, I wanted to ink up an orange ink. Now, uh, in terms of line variation, I think we're probably just about getting a Western medium. Now, if I push a little bit more I can probably get a little bit between a medium and broad and uh, I'm not going to push this nib too hard because I don't want to spring an expensive Mont Blanc uh, but if I continue with the vertical lines you're going to see there's no hard starts or skips this nib writes really really beautiful now, in terms of uh, ink wetness, let's take a look. And we'll do a horizontal pass. So this is quite a uh, wet nib. 
bordering on what I would class as being fire hose. Um, it's a very wet nib. Uh, and maybe the ink uh, is is helping that is along the way. What do I like? What do I not like about this pen? Well, um, as much as I'm not into wood pens, I just like the contrast between the black and the gold trim. Uh, I liked the pattern uh, engraving on the uh, the wood, which I think is ebony wood. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Um, but this really is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's got a good weight. When I when I saw that the weight was about 70 grams in weight on the uh, websites, I knew that I would like this pen because uh, I know that it's going to be similar to a, a, a 149 Mont Blanc size and a, a lot weightier as well. So I knew that I was going to like that. Uh, Clearly, I, I liked it enough to buy it. I bought it out of my own money. Uh, and this pen is going to remain in my collection probably for some time. Uh, what do I dislike about the pen? There's nothing really I dislike other than maybe the packaging. I think the packaging could have been a little bit better uh, for the cost of this pen. Um, but equally, I would say that I have way too many pen boxes and I am struggling to keep a lot of those boxes. I'm going to have to throw some out um, or sell some pens or both. Um, but I, I think certainly some of the boxes I'm going to have to throw out. But they're going to be the smaller boxes uh, for pens. And I really don't see that's going to make a huge amount of difference. Uh, but... Um, that's really the only thing I dislike about this is is the packaging could have been a little bit more elaborate perhaps. Uh, so there you have it. That's my unboxing and review of the Mont Blanc Around the World in 80 Days Special Edition with a medium 18 karat gold nib. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.